guys and welcome back to my channel this is episode 11 of the coastal landscapes and change series over here on my channel and today we're going to be looking at managing coasts in a holistic way this is the final episode of the coastal series in a few weeks months i don't know how many long time i'm gonna do kind of like an hour long overview of everything in the topic so subscribe to see that i don't know when that's going up yet though um but yeah this is the last episode of the coastal landscapes and change revision series if you haven't seen the rest of them i'll link the playlist up here or if i don't it's somewhere on my channel you can go find it um so yeah that's exciting please do stick around share this whole series with someone who you think might find it useful and let's just get going odisha's coastal zone Odisha's coastal zone on India's northeast coast has a wide range of coastal and marine flora and fauna, including 1,432 kilometres squared of mangrove forest. It is rich in mineral deposits and has huge potential for offshore wind, tidal and wave power. Cultural and archaeological sites also dot along the coast. Coastal fishing employs large numbers of people as fishermen, as well as those employed to process the fish caught. However, Odisha's coastal zone is under stress from rapid urban industrialisation, marine transport, fishing and aquaculture, tourism, coastal and seabed mining, coastal erosion, offshore oil and natural gas production, and an increase in the frequency and intensity of severe weather events such as cyclones and rising sea levels, of course. In an attempt to manage some of these problems, an integrated coastal zone management project has been implemented with the aim of managing the coast and resources in a sustainable way. Here, different organisations have an in different interests in managing the coast, and these have consulted with each other who have a stake in its future. Some of the main organisations who have a role in these organisations are the central federal government, the state and local government, and stakeholders in the local economy. So you've got your archaeological development of culture, your water resource department and your fisheries department, which are all federal government. In your local government, you've got your Oshi State Disaster Management Authority, the State Pollution Control Board, Wildlife Wing and Forest and Environment Department and Paradeep Municipality. And then your stakeholders in the local economy are your Ochida Tourism Development Corporation and Handcraft and Local and Cottage Industries. In addition to the inter-organisational consultations, a wide range of public consultations have also been held, including with individual villagers about issues including the development and control of coastal erosion, the development of ecotourism, planting or replacing mangroves, and building cyclone shelters. Greenpeace India, an environmental pressure group, has also been involved in the meetings about income generation and management of marine resources, acting with some of the villagers included in the ICZM project. Back to Holderness. The East Riding of Yorkshire Council developed a similar ICZM, which was launched in 2002. It involves over 80 organisations and was called Towards a Sustainable Coast. It was based on the UK government's principles for coastal management in England, which included taking a holistic approach, adopting a long-term perspective, pursuing adaptive management, seeking specific solutions and flexible measures, working with natural processes and providing participatory planning. The ICZM was used to develop the Flamborough Head to Gibraltar Point Shoreline Management Plan, published in 2011 and to deliver the East Riding Coastal Change Pathfinder 2010 to 2012. Flamborough Head and Gibraltar Point are the northern and southern limits of the major cell sediment on England's east coast. What is the SMP? At Flamborough Head to Gibraltar Point, SMP sets out the policy for managing the coastline and responding to coastal erosion over the next 100 years. It assesses potential erosion and flood risks and then identifies sustainable coastal defence and management options, which will take into account the influences and needs of human, natural and historic environments. SMPs are recommended for all sections of the coastline in England and Wales by DEFRA, the Government Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Four options are considered for any stretch of coastline. 
hold the line, advance the line, manage retreat and strategic realignment and do nothing, no intervention. What's the plan for Holderness? The plan is that the coast will be managed up to 2025. Beyond that, plans are in place but they may change in a few areas, such as the coastline adjacent to the gas terminals at Diblington and Easington, depending on whether these sites are still in use by then. CBA and EIA. In order to make the decision about where to protect, the CBA and an Environmental Impact Assessment, or EIA, are carried out. For each different area, the economic assessment identified whether the benefits clearly outweighed the costs, the benefits marginally outweighed the costs, or the costs clearly outweighed the benefits. The CBA concluded the following. Along the undefended parts of the coast, the do-nothing policy has no costs. However, there will be some economic losses, such as lands, buildings, etc. The benefits outweigh the costs of continuing project to continuing to protect Bridlington, Hornsey and Withersea. The economic benefit of holding the line at Mappleton is similar to the cost. Because of the current importance of the gas terminals at Dimlington and Easington, the benefits clearly outweigh the costs. Sperm Point will also be allowed to evolve, requiring minimal costs. An EIA decides whether environmental quality will improve or worsen as a result of the differing options of managing the coast. The decision under the SMP to hold the line for current defences at Dimlington and Easington gas terminals. An EIA for coastal protection works recommends the current protection scheme of a rock revetment made up of large granite boulders, which is approximately one kilometre long. Wider issues. Decisions about whether to defend the coast or not are complex judgments based on a range of factors, not just a CBA or an EIA. Winners and losers. From Adisha to Holderness, one of the many of the world's coastal zones are vulnerable to flooding or erosion, or fake threats from a range of factors. Differing players are involved. Local authorities, homeowners, environmental pressure groups, to name a few. As decisions are made about how to manage the issues that they face, some people are bound to come out on top, while others lose out. Over the next few decades, countries face difficult decisions about the best way to manage the coast. In the UK, farmland and isolated houses are likely to remain unprotected. Residents, councils and, business and businesses often disagree about the best approach. Conflicts arise when coastal defences in one place have a negative impact elsewhere along the coast and where there are delays in the implementation of coastal protection. Managing the coast. Engineering feasibility. This considered the following. Is it the right method? Is it achievable? Is it within budget? What are the risks? Environmental sensibility asks the questions. Does the coastline include sites which are protected, such as national, national nature reserves, sites of special scientific interest? Flamborough Head and Spurn Head are both defined as heritage coasts. Hornsey Mere is an SSSI and a special protected area. Flamborough Head is also a special area of, of conservation. Land use and value. What are the costs for and how much is the land worth? Much of the Holderness coastline consists of agricultural land. Where coastline is not protected, it is likely to be lost to the sea. Agricultural land is classified from grades 1 to 5, 1 being excellent, 5 being poor. It is estimated that by 2025, approximately 160 hectares of grade 3 and 4 land will be lost to erosion. Impact on coastal processes. Doing nothing means that coastal processes continue uninterrupted. By allowing Flamborough Head to continue to erode, sediment continues to be supplied to other parts of the coastline. Holding the line at Bridlington, Hornsey and Withensea means that erosion is prevented there, thus interrupting sediment supply further south. The same happens at Mappleton, Diblington and Easington. Defended areas are likely to become promontories and beaches may become narrower. Political, social and economic reasons. Agriculture is a key employer in the area. Many jobs depend on it. Tourism is also another key area along the coast and is a major contributor to the local economy. Most coastal villages will not be at risk of erosion over the lifetime of the SNP but some individual properties are. Approximately 37 homes are at risk of disappearing into the sea by 2025. Politically, costs have to be acceptable to the government of the day, and often something has to seem to have been done. 
Do nothing may be a reasonable option, but it's rarely acceptable to those affected. And that is the end of this episode. It's the end of the series. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. If you did, please do subscribe down below. I'm going through the rest of the specification. I don't which I don't quite know which topic I'm doing next. I probably should by this point. I just don't know when this is going up, so I can't say. Um, but yeah, subscribe down below. If you wanna check out the other playlists, they're all on my channel. So far, I honestly, as I say, I don't know when this is going up. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it was interesting for you and I will see you same time, same place next week for the start of a new revision series. So see you later guys. Bye.